How do you know about Cleveland? I live in Westlake. Flats area. Glenfield. I grew up on 105th. I know every one of my neighbors. We laugh and cry together. Best location in the nation. That used to be the rap. To know us is to explore our neighborhoods, consider our heritage, hear our voices. I've been here more than 40 years. Man, that's a lot of history. So how do you make sense of our city's history? Clevelanders are tough, they're a gritty people. Over the years, we've been made fun of. Burning of the river, all of that. We know how to deal with adversity very well. The fundamental criteria of being part of this renaissance is the same for us as it is for anyone else. The thing that makes me most proud to be a Clevelander is the resilience that this town has, the never give upness. People get confused going from the west side to the east side. You can cross two bridges to go to a bar that's down the street. Everything's going in down here. The flats are back to being rebuilt, new restaurants, new businesses. And now people are living down here too, where that really never happened in the last 100 years. You know, the lifeblood of a city is always the river. I would have never thought the flats would look like that. I mean, so many places to eat, party, hang out. This city is so pumped right now. Pumped. We stand today on the threshold of history. But to make sense of Cleveland's rejuvenation, we must consider our extraordinary past. It's a lengthy journey with some bumps along the way. This is considered the Huff area right here. That's the first place I live. This is part of history. The Huff riots, that was back in the 60s. Jobs left, the steel mills closed, things like that. Saw it deteriorate. Things that really impacted the city that caused businesses to move out of the inner city. People were continuing to seek the American dream in the suburbs. The people who didn't have the means to follow them were left behind here. A little rough. <laughs> A little, little rough. This was not the city it had once been. When Cleveland was one of the nation's centers of industry and manufacturing. In the beginning of Cleveland, it was all industry. The whole river was factory shipping. There were just houses on top of houses all up and down the river, factories and uh, smokestacks everywhere. In the early 20th century, Immigrants came here from Southern and Eastern Europe and found plenty of work. Entrepreneurs and innovators accelerated our rise into an economic and cultural powerhouse. We were creating more patents here than any other city in the country. Political, corporate, and philanthropic leaders invested back into our city, into our very future by creating many of Cleveland's pillar institutions. The 1920s saw immigrants continue to pour into the city. This really was my playground as a kid. My grandmother was from Russia. As a little child, we would get up really early and I would sleep underneath the counters. Slovenians, Croatians, Germans, Italians, Greek, uh, everybody had their own neighborhood around here in Cleveland. Overseas immigration and migration from the South continued through the Great Depression and World War II. Right after the Second World War, there were factors that were going on in Puerto Rico that made my father come here. Lorraine, Ohio was seeking young guys to go work in the blast furnace, the hottest part of the steel industry. My grandfather played for the Negro Leagues here. That's how my family actually got here. Wow. He came up here and played for the Cleveland Buckeyes. And um, they were able to, at that time, be fortunate enough to move into Glenville. Where'd they play at? On Huff? No, Lee, in Lee Park. 
In the middle of the 20th century, Cleveland was one of America's 10 largest cities. But by then, many were more focused on living and building in the suburbs. Industry jobs also began going away, and our city's core began to deteriorate. Cleveland used to be really separate neighborhoods. So when I was growing up, I couldn't walk up Murray Hill. Kind of like a ghost town in a sense. Amidst social upheaval, Clevelanders made history electing Carl Stokes as America's first African-American big city mayor. Surrounded by high culture, wealthy suburbs, and the pillar institutions that had sustained the city, many Clevelanders were growing up amidst some of the highest poverty rates in the nation. It was tough times. The river catches on fire, the mayor's hair catches on fire. What are the chances of that? Both of those things happening. I grew up in the Glenville area, and I grew up in an era where many of us who were in honors courses, or we call it major work, had to ride yellow buses to the other side of town. For many in Cleveland, the 1970s represented a low point. But the decades that followed saw reinvestment in the key areas of the city, like the lakefront and Playhouse Square. Suddenly things started picking up again. I mean, almost like spiritually, you know, it wasn't actual economically, but the, the economics followed the spiritual rebirth. The city's shift to a new post-industrial economy was underway, with growth in higher education, research, and medicine. Our city today is a magnet for people around the world. Uh, we're from San Antonio, Texas. From Paris. We're from Sydney in Australia. While we were in town, got to see the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's quite cool. It's probably my favorite place in Ohio at the moment. We're a rock and roll town in our DNA. The blue collar ethos is burned into our soul. Since the beginning, Cleveland's people and its pillar institutions have distinguished the city with achievement. I came here because of medicine and because of how outstanding the Cleveland Clinic is. I call Cleveland the medical city. With its world-class institutions, our city remains a place of confounding contrasts, of distinct realities, of a rebirth now in progress. That future is rooted in Cleveland's connection to the global economy and how our neighborhoods and schools prepare the next generation. There are many today that call education the civil rights issue of our time. Today, we make history as we pass it on to our students. All of this history, all of this knowledge is jumping off the page. And that's one of the huge takeaways that I want for our students is possibilities are endless. You just have to want it, dream it, do it. Community development is not just bricks and mortar. The legacy of our dynamic past, our desire to propel us forward will reshape the future. It's this weird combination of extreme cynicism and undying eternal hope. I love LeBron a lot because he did say he would bring a ring here. And yeah. when's the last time we had one of those? I waited 50 years for a winner. I liked Cleveland before it was cool. Driven to overcome, we know that the full story of Cleveland continues to unfold, to be discovered, to be imagined. With every era, we build upon what has been created by previous generations. For this is where our future begins. We're history. We're about good food. I see people from all over the world working here. You feel an immense pride. You feel how am I going to contribute to it, a, a challenge? We don't give up. Free parking is demanded by all true Clevelanders. It always starts off with the individuals. Cleveland starts here. Cleveland is, it, it's my home.